Today I'm mixing and mastering a hardstyle track and you can join me and see how I do it in my studio. I want to divide the mixing in three different parts, the intro and outro stuff, the break part and the drop part. And I want to get started with the break part. So this is the break. And that's where the drop starts. One of the biggest tricks in mixing is not knowing what these buttons do. Uh, is not knowing what, what the software does. That all doesn't matter. It's all about having a, a vision of the mix. So here, here is my vision about it. We, we start with a bat uh, with these three stems. So... These things are all over the place. So they, they are everywhere, but... The trick is to make them that they leave enough room as possible because we need that room for the chords that come in over here. These ones. So first we're going to make room and then we are going to fill that room with mostly this. The, the of course it's there, but I'm not being blown to the back wall from it. So that's a bit of a goal we want to make for those chords. So not, not, but that's what we want. So then we've got an organ that comes in, which will help and will make the sound a bit bigger. And the cool thing is the producer did already filter the, 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 the lead chords that he filtered off the high end. So that's also the place where the, this organ sound will take over. This other thing, that that thicky, ticky thing will, will excite us more and will get us more in the move. So it's really important that it's in there, but that ticky thing can be a bit spooky. And, and with spooky, I mean, it has to be there in a way that if you mute it, that you know that it's there. And if you, if you don't mute it, then you feel it, but you won't hear it. You won't, you will hear it, but yeah, you understand me. We need to still keep some room left for the melody that will come in over here. And as you can hear right now, all those instruments are screaming for some room in the mix, and w which they don't get. Uh, so, so that's the mission I'm on about uh, with these things. Uh, I'm going to divide these uh, uh, stems into a few groups, and I'm first going to make the bed. So I'm trying to make this sound a bit uh, thin, so it won't clog up the room. This one can take a bit more room, and I only want it to take room in the mid. So I'm also cutting out the sub lows, it's not really much in there, as you can hear. Really a tiny bit, and then we're going to 1 kilohertz for some definition, and a bit of also a bit of air, because we need air, we need air, air like that, okay, and also a bit of fatness, okay, and the last one,
So something like this. So let's compare. I've recorded the original groups uh, all at the same level. Uh, and let's compare it to what it is right now. So, so this is with my settings. And this is without my settings. So again, with my settings, without my settings. And, and what I can clearly hear right now is that the balances are a bit off. And, and, and that's always a really difficult decision for me to make. Sometimes you want to change the balances. This is a bit too much, but you want to change the balances a bit in order to get a better sound. But at the same time, the producers most of the time don't want me to change their balances. I think I, I, I like my version more than the older one. So let's stick with that for now. So let's also add those, uh, those, those chord tick thingies. These things, let's also add them to it. We need to make them a bit spooky. So uh, let's... So like that, that, that was my idea of it. So having it really quiet and, and a bit far away in there, not taking up too much space. So let's bounce this back into Pro Tools, move on to the more melody, uh, melodious part of the track. So, so we've got three elements that take the front seat uh, after each other. Let's first do those chords. So it sounds like shit right now. Nice. It sounds a bit out of phase. Let's see what the meter says. Yeah. Difficult to say, but... So the only thing to really detect the phase problem is by listening. And I've got a wireless trackpad, so... And I can switch back and forth on the trim while sitting in the sweet spot. I don't know if you're listening with headphones, but I think you can clearly hear that you will get a bit sick when I switch the face. So that was clearly out of phase, so right now I'm inverting it. So there it is. So a small warning when working with these sounds is um, a lot of us will uh, tend to put too much high end in there and that's really not, not ideal. It's really like looking for the correct mid frequencies. Like that. And then And from there, look how much high you need. So I think I will dream about this uh, during the night because Right now, I'm, I'm not sure if, if I'm going in the right way, but... So what I'm doing in these situations, when I'm not 100% sure, uh, I move on. Don't stay at one sound for too long. So let's also enter the, uh, the organ into the mix. So this organ is also a, a difficult story. It is telling a story, but it doesn't want to be up front. It's not a sound that wants to be over here. It wants to be a bit more in the back, but it still wants to tell its story.
and, and what I'm gonna do, I, I wanna make it a bit light. And then of course the, the, the main melody um, arpeggio comes in which I want to run through some things. Uh. So if we if we listen to the full break we'll get this Still not happy about those uh, synths that are over on this EQ. Well, maybe there is a way. There just has to be a way. There, there. That, that's what I want. That's what I. That's what I need. Cool. Almost. Let's keep it like that for now. Cool. So let's bounce this back into Pro Tools and then move on. And I just saw the time and I'm going to take a break for today and I'm back tomorrow. So let's continue on the next day. And back, back at the studio. So let's work on the drop. So a hard style drop isn't really rocket science. We've got a kick and a lead melody and they both need, need to take up the same amount of space. They, they need to be woven together. So we got two different drops. We got drop number one, which is... And we've got drop number two, which is more melodic. Forever. And in here, we are switching the kick also. That's going to be a bit of a challenge. So let's first work on the first drop and then do the second drop and, and then connect everything together. So uh, I will advise you to listen on big speakers or on headphones to hear this because the producer of this track, Mauritz, also layered the kick with a sub bass a frequency line thing. It's pretty sub bass. It's, it's so low that I almost don't know if I need it. Okay, so let's first wave these two together and let's see if we can get a, get a tight sound from these. What I'm going to try right now is push it through my analog tape machine and see if it will get any richer or better or not. If it doesn't, then I'm not going to use the tape machine. But for now, let's pull it through the tape machine. Okay, so let's turn the machine on. Um, we are running on high speed. I think that will give the best result. Low speed will cut off the high frequencies. So that's cool. Let's uh, wind it like that. And let's keep it running. 
And right now, it's really just, let's see what happens. It's always experimenting, so. Wow. wow. I already like it. So first thing, before I'm going to start the queuing, we are on bypass right now. I'm first going to try and drive it a bit more through the tape machine. So I'm pulling back my output and I'm pulling up my input. By overdoing things, you can really hear what the effect of the machine is. And right now I can balance it between what I want and what the machine can do. So let's balance this. So just a tiny bit of tape machine. Let's also add some bit of high, bit of So it's all relative. A kick is nothing with the rest around it. So we need a melody or something else to, to weave it together because you cannot weave like one hand and you, you need to weave. So, so yeah, I'm picking up the other two sounds, drop sounds over here and I'm... Let's EQ some things in this. Cool, so uh, what I'm doing right now, uh, I'm listening on these small speakers, not the big ones, on the small speakers and right now they are almost bouncing off the bridge of the console and that's a good sign. So I'm happy with the sound of the kick, whoa. Yeah, sound of the kick is pretty cool. Let's see if I can also weave it together with the other melody because we've got the same kick but a different melody in the second drop. Right now I'm thinking to adjust the kick a bit. So what I, what I wanted to do is uh, adding some highs to the kick, but I can also remove some highs from the drop synth because in the other section it already was good. So. And this synth also needs a reverb, but I will add that later. So there's another kick coming in there, but I will process that one independently from the rest. Because, so that second kick will come in after we've had all the other stuff. I want to adjust that last kick to the rest and not the rest to the last kick, because that isn't going to work. Okay, so tape plus EQing will be the thing for this, uh, for, for, for this sound.
you know, it's, it's a really simple trick. What I do, uh, I make the loop in such a way that I can hear the old kick and the new kick together. So I know where to connect them and I can immediately hear where things are going wrong. And right now they are actually already connected. That I think that it's because I'm using the same processing on them both. That is pretty cool. And that means that we have both the break and the drop settled and we can now start working on all the details. Okay, so we just moved forward in time. I just did the details by myself. It really wasn't interesting at all. Uh, it's, it were simple things, a little reverb here, a leveling there. Um, not something I thought it was worth sharing. I, I don't want to waste your time any more than I'm doing right now with this long video. It's time to master this bastard. bastard. Anyway, mastering hard style is pretty difficult also. We want to have it loud and we also want to have a lot of sub frequencies. As we all know, I make my mixes in a way that I don't need a lot of mastering. It's it's still, you know, some tweaking and some stuff that needs to happen. So let's look at sub lows. So one of my tricks is that to do in hard style is to make the sub lows really tight. So so don't make the band too wide because then you will also have some other bullshit in there and uh, we really only want to attack the the, the real sub frequencies. Like that. Let's make it also, you know, big enough so it can play around. Mid frequencies also important. Of course the, the low frequency crossover starts at where the where the low mids end. The high crossover point of, of the multiband. Uh, I like to end them where things get sharp. So this is too much. This isn't sharp at all, so, so that, that's where I want it in this track. So this way I can control the sharpness in, in you know a single band in, in the in the multiband. And as you can see, I'm setting all the ratios and, and look ahead to, to the maximum. Uh, I actually use my multiband as a sort of pre-limiter before I go into the real limiter. Interesting thing, this makes it clear that that drop synthesizer is a bit too loud. So I'm turning it down over here. Okay, so let's look at the loudness of it. Because loudness still is a bit of important. So there we have it. Let's reset it. Because I just lowered that synthesizer, I think I can turn up the volume of the of the uh, mid-high frequency band. Same goes for the uh, for the other melody. It's just a bit too loud because it, it's it's pushing away the kick. So and another cool thing to do is just uh, side chain it a bit so so we can make some room for the kick because right now it's it's a mess as you can hear and we need to solve this. So we are you know doing like oof, bus tree pre bam 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 bam. Bam, bam, let's first listen to it. So I 
I'm removing that uh, sub-low baseline because I just don't need it. It's, it's just not necessary. We've got a small distortion thingy, but I, I need to see where it comes from. I think my limiter doesn't like it. Let me... Okay, so I'm, I'm starting to smile. That's good. Sorry. Let's listen over here on the small speakers. Okay, so right now I'm pretty happy with uh, with how it sounds and this is the point uh, at which I print out the first version and send it over to Maurits and see what he thinks about it. So that's also where I'm ending this video. So I hope you like this video uh, and I hope you can do something with this uh, and, and with this look into my workflow. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Put a thumbs up if you liked it and if you are angry because you didn't like it put two thumbs down because yeah that will help me a lot there's a separate video with a comparison with a before and after linked over there and there's another video of me linked over there and you can subscribe to my channel over there and if you do it that's really cool for now thanks for watching until next time bye bye